So let's just say same exact scenario happens and the cop puts his hands around Mr. Floyd's neck and he strangles him in broad daylight. There would be no question about the intent. There would be no question that this was first degree murder. Hi friends, it's Ro. Welcome back. Today we have a serious topic that I've been wanting to talk about, holding off from talking about, have been shamed for not talking about yet. I got a really good question that made it so perfect for me to talk about this. So if you're interested in my opinion, sort of on the George Floyd case and how I feel about the officers being charged one way, small amount of time, small amount of charges for what was done versus how Adam was sentenced. This is not because of anything that I feel or felt. It didn't even come to mind until I'm answering one of your questions, but I thought it was a great question and a great way for me to touch on this as somebody who's dealt with injustices of the system, but also who has white privilege. So if you're interested in my thoughts on this, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I help family members of the incarcerated. If you want to know anything else about my story, just go back and watch other videos. It's been a rough week dealing with this whole George Floyd situation. It's been heartbreaking. It's been rough. It's been emotional. It's been every single emotion. There are people who have shamed me for not speaking out fast enough. And I think people forget just because you put yourself out there online People forget that we have feelings too. We have to sort through emotions too. And I believe because you have a platform, my pla I don't think my platform is huge. I would love to influence as many people as I possibly can, but there are people out there with millions of followers that I can't speak on their behalf, but I can speak on my own behalf because I do have a decent, I guess decent audience. I don't know. I don't, I don't consider it big. I don't consider, consider myself successful on YouTube, but I'm also <laughs> really hard on myself. Anyway. I think that it's this crazy gamut of emotions where people expect us to just have the right words all the time and we have to grapple with our own emotions. And what I was grappling with was this weird shame for being born with white privilege, right? And I will never understand what it feels like to not have white privilege. And as you saw on my video where I talked about being a highly sensitive person, I always put myself in other people's shoes, I try to take their pain off of them. And in this instance, I can't. But then also, on the other hand, there's this weird fear of speaking out and saying the wrong thing when you do have a platform and you're trying to represent people and you're trying to speak on behalf of a community of people, you don't want to say the wrong thing. Everything you say can be turned and used against you. It has been in the past on my videos. I've seen it done to other people on their videos and I never want to say the wrong thing, especially with something so dramatic, traumatic and serious. So just remember, because you will handle things in a certain way doesn't mean that everybody else will handle things in a certain way. You have to give them time to sort through their emotions. Earlier this week, I got caught in watching videos and then I got caught in watching the protests on videos. And at one point, there was a video of a protest and there was a black man protesting and screaming and a white cop was getting ready to charge him. And this black female cop, God bless her, comes charging up and she's going, no, no, you're not going to do that to him. And as I'm like, yes, girl, yes, I could feel, <laughs> I literally started having panic breathing because I'm like, please don't hurt her. Please don't hurt her. Please don't hurt that guy. Please let everybody be okay. In that moment, everything was okay. She saved the day, like girl power. But in that moment, I thought, I need to disengage for a minute. I need to protect my own bleeding heart, like I said on the highly sensitive people video, and I need to figure this out before I can help anybody else. I have to help myself, and it is not even close to about me. I'm just saying why it took me a minute to speak out and why it probably took other YouTubers a minute to speak out. And you also have to remember that a lot of us pre-film our videos because it's, it's not as easy as you think to just film a video and throw it up. Some people do, and it comes out great, and that's the beauty of also live video, but a lot of us find our creative outlets in these videos, and we want to put our best foot forward when we post videos, so it takes a while to get ready to film, then to edit. I think I'm usually two or three weeks in advance, but as of late, because of things going on in my personal life, I've been about 
three videos pre-scheduled. So I'm about a week in advance. So yes, we can move stuff around, but it's just not as easy as it seems. So please just give everybody some grace. I know you're passionate. I know everybody's angry right now. I know everybody wants to fight, but we also have to remember we're all fighting on the same team and we don't want to shame each other for not doing things the right way because there is no right or wrong way to grapple with emotion as long as we're all on the same team. Okay, let me read this question and then I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts on the case and the charges. This says, Adam has really been on my mind with the George Floyd case. I realize Adam's case is totally different from what happened to George Floyd, but I'm just wondering how you feel about the charges against the four now ex-police. I think of Adam and there was no loss of life. Yet, as a young adult, Adam was thrown away by the justice system and he was stacked with BS from the prosecution, in my opinion. Now we have Mr. George Floyd, God rest his soul. Oof, it gets this, it gets me so emotional every time because I watched that video and I told you guys I can like feel people's pain. I had asthma my whole life, really bad, starting at six months old. Thank God I grew out of it, but I know what it feels like to not be able to breathe and oh, what he must have gone through in those last almost nine minutes of his life. Oof, okay. He was murdered in front of witnesses by people who took an oath to serve and protect, not arrest, prosecute, and execute. Amen, girl. First, they take their time arresting Derek. Then, my opinion, charges didn't match his crime. He took a man's life and he knew what he was doing. Then it took another long time for the remaining ex-officers to be charged again. Charges don't match their crime. I'm hearing 25 years, 40 years max, WTF. Personally, I would rather Derek for sure to face the death penalty, but the state doesn't have it. So it's life, no parole, my opinion. So why has Adam been on my mind constantly? He made a stupid choice, but it didn't take anyone's life. And when I see these disgusting cops kill a man and they're suggesting 25 years, 40 years, I think of Adam and he was sentenced to 213 years. I know it's a touchy subject to weigh in on the George Floyd case, but I was wondering if you plan to or would think about doing a video about the sentencing and I cannot think of a better person to do the video. Oh, sweetie, like I'm so emotional this week. That humbles me to tears. Thank you. I'm not suggesting you do the video on your take of the entire case. Just thought it would be a great opportunity to show the difference between someone protected behind a badge and someone who screwed up when they were still growing mentally. Adam was young. He didn't get a chance. Why should the ex-officers get a lighter sentence than a general citizen? I know Adam's going to be coming home and I hope it's very soon. Thanks so much. Love and respect, my friend. Love and respect back to you. What a beautiful question. I'm in my car sweating my face off i'm sorry you guys I knew that today was going to get hectic at work i literally just sent a call to voicemail so i could finish this get it done and get it up for you guys as soon as possible let's start by taking out of out of the equation i actually had a friend text me the day afterwards and she's like what's your take and i said first of all this is not third degree murder manslaughter where there's no intent this is not second degree murder in my opinion this is 100 percent first degree murder that cop sat there with his hand casually in his pocket like it's just another casual day at the office while he was murdering somebody in broad daylight where there were witnesses the man he was killing was telling him i can't breathe he was begging for his life there is intent there any way you roll the dice when you watch that footage he knew exactly what he was doing Mr. Floyd's family ordered an autopsy, their own personal autopsy, and it came back that the cause of death was exfisi, exfisi, the cause of death was exfisi, exfisi, exfix, I, I've tried a hundred times, exfisiation, exfis, you know, it was suffocation, the A word I can't say right now, specifically to his neck, the knee and the neck. So let's just say same exact scenario happens and the cop puts his hands around Mr. Floyd's neck and he strangles him in broad daylight, there would be no question about the intent. There would be no question that this was first degree murder. It is the exact same cause of death. It is the exact same injury to use your hands or to use your knee when you're asphyxiating somebody. There it is. When you're strangling somebody to death, it causes the same injury. It causes the same issue. It causes the same lack of oxygen. It blocks the air pipe. So where's the question here? there's no room for interpretation or speculation if the tables had been turned 
and it was a black man who murdered a white cop they would have gone after him they would have thrown the book at him they would have gone after him for capital murder and they would have gone after him for capital punishment they would have pushed for the death penalty so what makes it different here because that man wore a badge regardless of adam's case or not what makes it different just from an average citizen's perspective we'll get to adam in a second because that man wore a badge it was still murder in the first degree if you ask me this is my opinion this is based off of what I've seen on that video. This is based off of whatever you want to call it. I'm just saying I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a cop. I'm not in anything except for a citizen who has like this much knowledge of the criminal justice system. Here's my take on the other officers that were there. If Tom, Dick, and Harry went out for a drive, Tom pulled the car over and shot somebody in broad daylight, Dick and Harry would have been charged as accessories in that crime. So tell me why after killing this man casually in broad daylight in the middle of the afternoon they all just walked away literally like nothing had happened like it was just another day at the office got in their cars got away with murder literally and walked away if that was an average citizen all of them would have been charged with murder so i'm with you that i'm heartbroken that it took an outrage from the rest of the world to demand that these people people who think that they're above the law because they wear a badge get arrested and here's the other thing i've witnessed this most of you guys have witnessed this every single day i have for as many years as i've been with adam you have for as many years as you've been involved in the criminal justice system that there is so much corruption behind power specifically a story where adam said that he was so hurt and so upset because the captain a new captain at the prison snatched up this he said he looked like he was like 17 18 year old skinny little kid who had just gotten out of the hole so he's really really thin very underweight frail at that point threw him on the ground he said the kid did nothing nothing threw him on the ground started kicking him over and over and over again and all the other officers did nothing and he said i felt so disgusted with myself in the moment because hopping in could have done nothing good for anybody involved in the situation and those citizens that just had to stand there and watch a man get murdered it's the same thing but i saw somebody say online so so truthfully this is what four cops will do in broad daylight with people watching like it's just a normal day on the job in the afternoon with at best apathetic looks on their faces at worst f you I'm better than you, blank stares, proud stares, whatever it was on their faces, then what happens behind closed doors? What happens behind those walls when there is no accountability? Because all they have to do is say st safety and security. They kill people every day and then blame it on other things. It got so hot in the car. I had to come home. I actually had to get on a work call, drive home, and I just wanted to finish this video. So the last thing I wanted to say is about Adam's case and his charges versus the cop's case and his charges. I, I love your heart and I love that you look out for me and Adam's on your mind. And to be 100% honest, that never once even crossed my mind. And I think it's because I learned through this case and through Adam, and I learned a long time ago that in criminal justice, it's not comparing apples to apples. It's just not. No two cases will ever be alike. Although I totally hear what you're saying and I totally understand what you're saying and I totally appreciate what you're saying. I, maybe not related to this case, but I made a video a few years ago where I said these 10 simple words that will help anybody get through anything unfair in life. I had gotten this email and it was a woman who explained, I'm, I'm giggling because it was just so cute. And she explained this story about how her daughter was five years old. She was in kindergarten and they were playing with crayons that day. And her daughter came home all bent out of shape, heartbroken, that she made her mother, she wanted to make her mother this picture and she couldn't do it because she didn't get the color that she wanted. She got a different color crayon. So her mother explained to her in life, you get what you get and you don't get upset. Although it's very upsetting what happened with this cop. That's why I'm saying it's not here, but I can't compare Adam to another person or I would just be a miserable human being. Now, let me add a disclaimer because I'll sound like a hypocrite if I don't say this. You'll hear me say things like, he got all this time, nobody was hurt and murderers or rapists get out in a fraction of the time. But you'll hear me say that in a setting when I have an audience 
where I need to highlight the injustice and I need to speak to an audience that can potentially help him and help right this wrong. But I don't look at everyday life like that because I genuinely can't. I think a theme throughout my videos has been you have to focus on the positive and what you have and you can't get trapped in the comparison game where you're not going to succeed on this journey or in life. So again, that never even crossed my mind when it came to that. Although I think it's a grave injustice if they're, if all of those cops, especially the one that committed the act, are not convicted and sentenced in a way that I believe they should be. It has nothing to do with Adam. I'm staying in my lane with Adam, and I believe this is a completely different lane, although, you know, same highway, different lane. I think that the that justice needs to be served because of the injustice done to Mr. Floyd and his life being taken too soon, and that has nothing to do with Adam and his case. I hope that makes sense. And let me add one more thing here, and this is kind of brazen to say, but I will put it out there, and I will stand behind it. Believe me if you want, think I'm exaggerating if you want, I don't care, but this is the God's honest truth. I believe that Adam would stay inside every single day for the rest of his life if that meant equality for all people. I genuinely do. And you know what? I would genuinely be okay with that. I'm not saying that I want that. I'm not saying that that's even a possibility. But what I'm saying is if that's what it meant, and it meant him having to live with this injustice for the rest of his life to make justice for all other people, I know he would. 100% without a shadow of a doubt. And I would stand by his side and be okay with it. 100% without a shadow of a doubt. So that's what I have. If you guys have more questions about this, if you want me to elaborate more, that is fine. But.